Okay, so in this lesson what I want to do is explain um, the, the most appropriate allele symbols to use um, depending on the mode of inheritance. Um, so we'll start off here at the top with um, with complete dominance. This is what we've been mostly talking about and, and we don't need to spend too much time on this. I'm, I'm sure that you know already that what we do is that for the dominant trait, that is, um, that is the trait that is expressed in the phenotype of a heterozygote, um, we're going to use a capital letter. And typically we use a capital letter which you know, somehow represents the trait that we're talking about. And for the recessive trait, we're going to use a lowercase letter of the same letter, and that's important. So we're going to have, you know, a big B and a little B, or a big H and a little H or something. That's the convention. It doesn't, you know, necessarily need to be a conventional symbol. Um, and, you know, and be aware that examiners might choose to give you symbols to use that aren't the conventional symbol, just to make sure that you understand the genetics and you're not just following patterns. But if you have to sign, if you have to assign um, allele symbols for a question, use these conventional ones. So capital letter for the dominant trait, a lowercase letter for the recessive trait of the same letter. If it's an X-linked trait, um, we're going to do the same thing, really. We're still going to use big B for the dominant trait, little b for the recessive trait, or the allele for that recessive trait. But the only difference is that because males have only got one X chromosome, um, we need to indicate whether the person we're talking about, when we're, when we're describing their genotype, we need to indicate... Um, whether they have two X chromosomes or only one. And so the way we do that is basically we're going to use, we're going to put our allele symbol as a superscript to an X. Um, the X is not the allele symbol. The allele symbol is the B. We just do it as a superscript to the X to remind ourselves that um, this is this that the locus for this, for this gene is on the X chromosome. Um, what that means, of course, is that a girl could have, there's three different possible genotypes for a girl. She could be big B, big B, homozygous for the dominant trait, or she could be big B, little b, heterozygote, or she could be little b, little b, um, or, of course, a man could be big B, his other X chromosomes are Y, and we typically would write his genotype like this. We only give him one allele symbol, but we write a Y in there just to remind ourselves that the reason he's only got one allele is because he's a male. Um, or, of course, a male could be little b, Y. Um, so if we're looking at these, th these two here will have the same phenotype. They're both going to um, have the dominant trait. Um, this girl here a girl with that genotype will have the recessive phenotype. This will be a boy with the dominant phenotype, and this would be a boy with the recessive phenotype. Um, but the thing to emphasize here again, um, at the risk of sounding like I'm repeating myself, is that um, it's the B that is the allele symbol, not the X. The X is just there to remind us that this is an X-linked trait. When we're talking about co-dominance or incomplete dominance, we use really the same pattern. People get confused, I think, when they're looking at allele symbols because they think that there are different rules for different modes of inheritance. Really, there aren't. We're using the same the same pattern. So if we were talking, if, if the gene that we were talking about um, was co-dominant or incompletely dominant, um, then again, um, the dominant, uh, one of those, let's say we're talking about now um, black and white hair, okay? Um, if, if black and white hair were not dominant, at, you know, you say up here we've said maybe black is dominant to white, um, or here black is dominant to white, but let's just say that black and white were incompletely dominant or they were co-dominant, then what we'd do is we, for black, we would assign the allele symbol big B, and for white we'd assign the allele symbol big B. We, we're going to give them both the same letter. Remember up here, we give a, a capital letter for the dominant trait, and for the recessive trait, we give a lowercase letter of the same letter. So here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give it a letter, the same letter, but because they're both equally dominant, we need to give them both a capital letter, but obviously that's going to be terribly confusing because they've both, they're both got the same allele symbol. So we need to be able to differentiate between them, and we typically do that um, by by maybe saying that this is B1 and this is B2, um, or that's one way of doing it, or another way, which is very common, um, and probably the one that I would prefer, would be to, to give a superscript to this, like that. Now, in this case, this is a little bit different to what we did with the X-linked traits, because in this case, it's not... 
remember up here it was the it was the b that was the allele here um not not the x in in the case we're looking at here it's it's again the b that's the allele the superscript is not the allele the superscript is just to tell us which b is which so again here um if we were to look at the genotypes we could have um we could have an individual who had the oops who had the genotype um big b big b both with the superscript little b or big b a heterozygote or of course it could be homozygous for the allele for white. So there's three different genotypes and three different phenotypes. This one here would be black, this one would be white, and the heterozygote would be, if it was a co-dominant trait, it would be black and white. If it was incompletely dominant, it would be neither black nor white, it would be an, a true intermediate, it would be gray, okay? All right, multiple alleles is, is really nothing different. Um, in fact, it's not even a mode of inheritance. Um, what it is, is just, it's a situation where there's more than, where there are more than just two alleles for a, a given gene locus. So in, using our Bs as, as an example, um, if there were multiple alleles, we might have um, the allele for black that we talked about. There might be the allele for white that we talked about. And there might be an allele maybe for yellow, um, which is recessive to either of these other two. We call that multiple alleles because there's more than just two alleles. Nothing else changes. Um, these two here are still um, incompletely dominant or co-dominant. And this is still recessive to this because it's a lowercase letter of the same letter. So the rules are all the same. We haven't changed any rules. Um, all we've done is express them a little bit differently. Because, of course, or we've got more of them because they've got, we've got more than just two alleles. When it comes to dihybrid um, inheritance, now let's say that we've got rabbits with black hair and white hair. Um, and we've also got rabbits who have long hair and short hair, if we're talking about rabbits. Okay, so a rabbit which has, which is homozygous for black long hair, um, it might have the genotype big B, big B, big L, big L. That would be a black rabbit with long hair. Of course, a rabbit who was heterozygous, who was big B, little b, big L, little l, would also be um, a black long-haired rabbit because it has the dominant allele in both cases, or the allele for the dominant trait. To get a white short-haired rabbit, we'd be wanting a rabbit who was homozygous recessive, for at both gene loci. Okay. Now, before we get off this this um, here, what I want to point out is that if we know that the traits are independently assorted, that is, if we know that the two genes that we're talking about are not on the same chromosome, then we indicate that by putting a semicolon between the two genes. Okay, so if you see a semicolon between the two genes that we're talking about, that means that we know that the two genes are not on the same chromosome, that they're independently assorted. On the other hand, if the genes that we're talking about are linked, then what we'd do is we'd show it like this. We, we'd say, um, we'd say it like that, we draw it. Now, people will look at that and they will say, oh, that looks like a fraction. It's not a fraction. What it is, in fact, if you imagine this, is it's a pair of homologous chromosomes, okay? And on this chromosome here, we have a, a big L, and on this chromosome here, we have a little L, and on this chromosome up here, we have a big B, and on this chromosome here, we have a little b, Okay, so what we've got is a pair of homologous chromosomes. One of those chromosomes has the has the alleles big L and big B. The other one has little L and little B. It's just that it's too hard to type that. So we tend to write it just a single line. And instead of writing our Bs and Ls on the side, we write B and L like this and little B and little L like this. And in fact, that's even too hard to type. So we often, very often, we type it like this. Okay, and that expression means the same as that, which really means the same as if we were to draw a pair of homologous chromosomes like that. 